What's up you guys? Today I'm going to show you how I designed a high-end website for a wedding videographer using Squarespace. Now I do love using Squarespace for my clients because it is so easy for them to manage it on their own. I really use it because I want them to feel empowered to be able to make edits on their own. They don't have to come to me for everything. It's just such a simple all-in-one system that just makes things so much easier to use. However, as a designer, sometimes it can be limiting with the amount of things that you can do creatively so other platforms like show it offer a lot more creativity for designers which is the reason why designers love it so much uh, but not so much an easy platform for clients to manage on their own so I'm trying to find this balance of allowing them to have the ease of the platform but also have that creativity to really make the website look different and look more high-end. So for this video, I am only going to be going over the design elements of a high-end looking website that you can build in Squarespace. There is a lot of strategy involved in laying out websites, and I'm not gonna go over that in this video. If you would like to know my website strategy, I do have a free high converting website planner on my website, and you are welcome to grab that. Okay, let's get started. Since Fluid Engine came out, there have been a lot of updates, and so I am happy to show you today how I was able to create a website that looks like it was done in some of the other programs like Show It that are a little more creative friendly and still use Squarespace. Now, step one before we do any designing in Squarespace is we have to know our fonts that we're gonna use and the color palette that we're going to use. I always love to look at other websites and I collect other websites for inspiration. So I had seen some other websites that I really loved the fonts from. And so I have this really cool tool. It's a, actually an extension in Chrome. So if you're using Google Chrome, it is an extension and I'll move my head here so that you can see. It's called, I think it's the what the font one. Is it the one? Yes. So there's, there's several different extensions that you can get that will figure out what the font is that some other website is using. So this font I loved and I saw it on another website and it's called Editor's Notes and it's actually something you have to buy. So I bought the font and uploaded it as a custom font in Squarespace, but it completely up levels this website because one, I just love the serif in all caps, but also, if you'll notice, the italicized version of this font has a really great ampersand. The italicized version looks more like a fancy font and not just like the font at an angle. It has a little swoosh, if you notice the F, has a little flare to it, just has a little bit extra swish to it that makes it look a little bit different, but it's actually the same font. One of the other features that I really liked in some of the high-end websites that I was seeing is the mix match of uppercase and lowercase with regular font and italicized version. So if you'll notice in this website, I do mix up some of the type within the same sentence to have an italicized version, uppercase, some of them have uppercase and some of them have lowercase. Now this is not grammatically correct, but visually this really captures the eyes and keeps the interest and allows people to scan really easily and see the key words that they want to read. So visually it's attractive, but also is user friendly because it helps people scan and allow them to read things easier. Now you don't have to use a custom font, obviously, but this is one of the things that is going to make your website stand out as a high-end website with a little more customization to it is these custom fonts. You're gonna stand out and not look like a regular Squarespace website. You're gonna look a little higher end. Now, if you don't know how to do custom fonts in Squarespace, there are lots of tutorials on YouTube on how to do it. It's a simple code. I will show you my technique as far as keeping my custom code together. Whenever I have a custom code that I know I'm gonna use again and again and again, instead of trying to go find that YouTube video, where did that YouTube video go with that custom code, I keep all of my favorite custom codes together in my notes app. I will just open up my notes app here and I have all the Squarespace custom codes that I really like 
all put in here so I can just go and find the custom font code and then I just copy it and paste it and then upload my custom fonts to the website. Now the next section is to do the color palette and as photographers and videographers they already have great photography to work with so my idea was to use one of the photos or screenshots from the videos and pull a color palette from one of their own photos and videos so that it would match their overall aesthetic. So there are a couple ways that you can do this. You can actually do this right in Squarespace. If you wanna click on the site styles, which is that paintbrush up in the right hand cor corner and go to colors, you can say edit palette. Now from here you can do presets. I do not recommend the preset. <laughs> I recommend e using from image. Now from image, you can drag an image right in here and it will pick a few colors from that image. This is the very, very basic way of doing it, and I definitely like the colors that Squarespace came up with for that. The second way you can do this is go to coolers with two O's.com and use their color palette. I really like all the features of coolers so that you can get a really good color palette. You can also upload a photo and pull a color palette from Cooler. So you just hit this little picture or camera icon. You can upload the photo, drag your photo in there. And then once you get it in here, you can actually pick, click on one of the colors. And if you don't really like that one color, you can move it around to another section. Say you want a lighter color to adjust all of these colors. What I do is then I screenshot this and save this so that I have this, but this is how I chose the color palette with more of a neutral color palette, but it gave me some color tones that work with their overall aesthetic. If you see websites where you really love the design, really take note for how they design their website. So I've looked at websites and what I noticed is they have really, really small navigation, all caps, at the top like this one really clean usually like a black or white very neutral color tones so the photography and the video really pop off the page the next section that's really going to make your website not look like a typical squarespace website is overlapping thanks to fluid engine there are elements now that we can overlap we can overlap logos over blocks we can overlap text over photos this looks like it's overlapping a section when in fact it is not. When we're in edit, here I'll show you the behind the scenes. You'll notice this blue line, that is the bottom of the section of the top. So how it looks like it's overlapping is, as, is I'm using two blocks, two shape blocks. One is a gray block, one is a white block, and it looks like it's overlapping the next section, which is also in white. So that's where that illusion of over overlapping sections is. You can make your sections as long as you want, and you can overlap as many things as you want. So, But it really gives that higher end look, and it also just breaks up sections and doesn't make it look so blocky like typical Squarespace websites do. Another typical Squarespace design or even just regular website design is just using a photo next to a block of text and they don't overlap. They're just usually like next to each other. So we're going to break this up and really catch people's eye as we're going to put two photos, one large, one small up against the sign, and then we're going to overlap text over the photo. This is this overlapping again gives depth to your photo. It catches people's eyes because they're not used to seeing that with website design. It just looks really high end and helps catch the attention. So this website is for a wedding videographer and I noticed because he has video, he didn't have photos. Usually the photographer is the one who takes the photos. So what I did was I went through his videos and I screenshot some of the best shots that I liked. I screenshot some landscape ones. I screenshot like this one, the interior, but something that was really light so that I could put text over it. So it also captures his work and is authentic to him. It's not a stock photo, but also allows me to use these static photos as backgrounds throughout the website. This photo again in the background is another screenshot from one of his videos. One of the things that I really think we should get away from using is the typical testimonial slideshows that Squarespace offers 
The reason B is because they're so common and because everyone uses them, they are pretty predictable. So breaking things up and giving some variation is really gonna catch people's attention and really make it look higher end. So featuring one testimonial over the others is a really great way to capture people's attention for one, but allow people to actually read it. Because sometimes I think when there's a bunch of small ones that scroll, people don't really read it. So using a large text, like absolutely amazing, is going to catch people's eyes and actually have them read the text. Now this is another one of those sections that overlaps to the next section. It looks like it overlaps to the next section, but it's actually overlapping a shape block. But it gives that overlapping look so things aren't so blocky, things really blend well with the next section and allows people to scan and keep moving through your website easily. So like I said, because this is a high-end wedding videographer, I wanted to use something different that wasn't the Squarespace typical testimonial slider. It's just too basic for something like this. So what I did was I found a testimonial slider plugin. It's actually a custom code that I got from Ghost Plugins. I believe it was Ghost Plugins. I'm not affiliated with them, but Ghost Plugins. And it's very affordable. But what it does is it really just up levels the testimonial sliders. I'm, I'm able to have that photo to the left and have the stuff to the right. It just looks so much higher end and a little more custom than Squarespace's basic testimonial sliders. Another section where the text is overlapping, this was a video, really makes it look more custom and elegant. One of the things I do suggest too is if you are embedding video from like YouTube or Vimeo, upload a custom thumbnail just because it looks so much more cleaner without having a bar at the bottom and like their username at the top. You get all those extra details that just don't look very fancy on a website. So this one, I uploaded a custom thumbnail photo. I actually screenshot a shot from the video to get this photo and uploaded it so really the only indication that this is a video is the play button in the middle so it just keeps the website looking very clean and very polished and just elegant now for the footer i really like overlapping it here again with the logo overlapping into the instagram photos all this whole section is included in the footer so there's no separate sections here which is how i'm able to layer things within the same section also, I don't link the Instagram account to the website for a reason because I want the photos that are on the website to be curated and match the website. Sometimes we upload things to Instagram um, that just don't naturally match our aesthetic and kind of look different than everything else. So this way I have all the photos that are aesthetically pleasing for the website. They all link to the Instagram account, but they don't pull automatically from the Instagram account. I just think it looks more curated and you don't have to worry about any of the images not looking good on your website or any of that. So I'm just gonna go through real quick and show you the other pages. Again, the about page, which can look super boring sometimes. We wanted to make this look high end. Also, props to the photographer for really doing a great job. If you don't have really great photography, that is going to not make your website look super high end. If you're trying to attract those high end clients, definitely get more high end photography done, but really wanted to spruce up this about page so it looked nicer than just like a typical about page. For the footer, we always included the credibility section, which are, you know, these publications that they've been seen in included with the footer so that those are on every page. The portfolio page, obviously featuring a video. Then we have featured galleries. And again, I use some custom CSS to have these have a rollover effect to them. So that is a custom CSS ability but I did do some more overlapping. If anytime you can do some overlapping, do some overlapping because it just helps break things up. Then we have more of just the regular gallery films and these are all set up as blog posts. So if you clicked on one of them, you would see that all the information, it's not a ton of information, but these help with keywords and help with ranking on Google. So make all of those blog posts to help with your rankings.
Then the services page is also a more longer page where we go through like a sales page strategy, but walking people through the process, walking them through each collection, really having some call to actions throughout, but also breaking things up visually as well. And then the contact page, which is pretty simple. If you have any questions about these custom codes or designing a high-end website, please leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them in another video. Also, if you need some inspiration on mixing things up with your website templates or your website so that they look a little more creative than the typical Squarespace standard designs, I do have 50 creative artboard designs on my website. These are all the ones that I've been inspired by and have used in my websites, but they're in Illustrator format or JPEG format. You can use them in your Illustrator mockups or pull in the JPEGs into your Squarespace websites and kind of build on top of them. This just helps break things up and give you some really creative ideas on building your next website. It's really like a designer's dream to have all of these in one place so that you can just quickly design and build websites fast. Thanks so much and I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.